Hello Sagittarians, this is your 2019 love, or yeah, 2019 love reading month by month for singles and couples. So I'm excited to dive right on into this. What we're going to do is similar to the general reading, we're going to lay down a tarot card for each month as well as an oracle card that corresponds to that month and to that tarot card. If more than one card jumps, it will go to the subsequent month, unless it's soup, like a bunch of cards that jumps, then I just reshuffling and then do it again. But one or two or three cards will just go January, February, March as an example. Then we will close with a reading from this particular deck, the Queen of the Moon Oracle. But for now, we're going to set her aside. And just work with the Romance Angels Oracle and the Triple Goddess Tarot that I love to use for my love readings. Most of my love readings, there's some decks that I don't, um, or that I do use, excuse me, for my love readings. All right, Spirit, so we are looking at Sagittarians, coupled and single for January. 2019. What's happening and what advice do you have for Sagittarians, couples, and single? We have the Six of Pentacles. Okay. What about January? Nine of Pentacles. What's happening in March for love, couple and single Sagittarian? Thank you, Spirit. We have, looks like the Queen of Pentacles. Lots of Pentacles going on, Sag. What's that all about? Hmm. Lots of family stuff, home stuff. All right. What about April? What's happening in April for our couple or single? Okay, we have the chariot. We have the two of wands for May. And then what do we have for June? Oh, we have two cards. Okay. So June is high priestess. July is the Page of Swords. Okay. What about August? Knight of Swords. In love, we're single and coupled up Sagittarians. What's happening in September? And what it plays? Do you have Spirit versus Sagittarians, Ace of Swords, what about October, Ten of Swords, okay, November, Judgment, hmm. and what about December? 2019. Death. Okay. Interesting. All right, Spirit. Now, can you give us some information on the Six of Pentacles for January for a couple of and single Sagittarians? What is the Six of Pentacles telling us? What advice do you have for Sagittarians? One jumper would be great. Thank you, Spirit. It says make the effort. Okay. All right. What is the Nine of Pentacles about for February for our coupled and single Sagittarians. Hmm. Retreat. What's 
going on with this Queen of Pentacles for a couple of these single Sagittarians in love. Calling in your soulmate. What about the chariot? For April, codependency. Hmm. All right, spirit. For Sagittarians, coupled in single. What is the two of wands really telling us? Or what additional insights do you have for Sagittarians? Very soon. And then for the high priestess, we have children. All right. And about this page of swords here, what additional insights, what wisdom can you share with us about that for a couple in single? Sagittarians, let go of control issues. What is the Knight of Swords about? Thank you, Spirit. Stay optimistic about your love life. What is the Ace of Swords telling us about our couple and single? Sagittarians. Does this give your relationship a chance? All right. And then we have the Ten of Swords. Okay. Passion. Hmm. What about this? What is this judgment card for couple and singles? In November 2019 for Sagittarians. Okay. Could be. Oh. I'm go. He says it's safe for you to love. And healing family issues with the death card. All right. Thank you, Spirit. You may consult the guidebook for romance angels and some of the interpretations but maybe not all right and for a closing message to tie up all these beautiful messages that you've laid before us, spirit what do you want to say to Sagittarians so they can focus on the new year let's see what's their focus word is this waxing crescent phi nourishment Okay, we'll take a look at that after a while. Now let's get to the reading. So in January we have Six of Pentacles, make the effort, give and take. So in your relationship with your partner, um, it's going to be about give and take this month, um, making sure, making the effort to reach over to your partner to hear their ideas on how to move forward with the family and the finances and the future goals. And as a result, you will then be blessed by your partner making the effort to do the same for you. And this is also making the effort with your children. Um, the romance um, readings that I do, yes, is primarily about readings for couples or readings for people in search of love but these readings are about love and so this is about you making the effort of really um, giving to your children and your children really feeling fulfilled and in turn giving you love and connection and so it's a worthwhile effort to make the effort for this this month um, whether it's you and your partner or whether it's you by yourself, it's time to realize that how the manifestational process works is it is a give and take, a give and receive situation always when you're trying to manifest. But it's it's about being in gratitude for what you have. It's about sharing what you wish to share. It's about um, working with one another and being able to receive being able to receive. Sometimes we have a hard time even receiving 
even after we've given something to someone or given ourselves to someone, it's hard for us to receive the blessings to come back to us. It says, great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. So that is what you are guided to do. Make the effort. Let me just read an excerpt from the guidebook. Here. I'm not going to read every single card. Like maybe just one or two. It says, you receive this card because some action steps on your part are necessary in order for your prayers about your love life to be answered. Okay. When you ask for spiritual help, you always receive it. Often this help comes in the form of intuitive guidance, which consists of repetitive feelings and thoughts. You get the sense that you should do this or that. You receive this card as a nudge to actually take that action. You'll then receive the next piece of the puzzle, meaning another intuitive message about what to do. If you like, you can ask the angels to give you the motivation, courage, time, and energy to take these steps. Know that each one brings you closer upon the pathway to great love. Beautiful. Now we have February. Nine of Pentacles and Retreat. And partly with the Nine of Pentacles lady, she does kind of retreat. She does kind of pull back. It says it's time for you to dis it's time to disconnect from the world. So perhaps if you're single, you're disconnecting and retreating from the world for a bit to kind of, you know, restore your energy, restore your body to um to get replenished to you to relish in the, the beautiful things that you have you're into relish in the good health that you're experiencing and so you to keep that up you have to retreat sometimes you have to pull back you're invited to even to pull back this month for those who are in relationships um, this is a time of recognizing that you would feel most fulfilled if you and your partner are able to pull go within and pull in go within and just spend time with one another and get to know one another and retreat from the world and just again relish in the blessings that you have um, you realize that you're well on your way to getting everything that you want in your love life in your in your home life and you also recognize the ebbs and flows of you know energy literally energy sometimes you're tired and sometimes you just want to be around your your partner and that's it. And other times you're energized, you're sociable. And she's not really sociable, but you, you go through these ebbs and flows and you and your partner get in sync with that. Um, in March, you have the Queen of Pentacles. Again, more Pentacles energy and calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. So... That's true for the queen of pentacles, whether you're a male or female, you are one who grounds yourself in goal setting, grounds yourself um, in calling in your soulmate, doing affirmations and actually receiving a call literally from your soulmate, like your soulmate is like near you for those who are searching for that big love connection. You may even know your particular soulmate. For others who are in relationships, this is confirmation that when you called out, you got your partner in return. So for many of you, this is just affirming that the connection that you have with your partner is a soulmate connection. You guys were meant to be, you know, in this time continuum. And you should just, you know, go with the flow and enjoy it and, and enjoy the you know, the fruits of your labor and of what you all have created and nurtured into being, whether it's a big family, whether it's a big love connection, a, a beautiful home, a, you know, a healthy physical body for the both of you. Um, and then also for a small number of you that, that are in relationships, but realize you may not be in a soulmate connection kind of relationship and you really desire that. So you start um, creating your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations to help bring you together uh, to your actual soulmate. So that way it's easy for 
the current mate who you're with to shed away and go maybe on his or her own accord and then your soulmate easily comes into your life but nevertheless you know you're ready for that soulmate connection then we have for april the chariot and then codependency it says addictions are affecting your romantic life so fast moving energies towards trying to get this situated get this healing happening for yourself and for your partner if you are the person who's codependent or you're both in a codependent situation where you are in a cycle where you allow your partner to get away with things that you know they shouldn't be doing but you're leaning on them emotionally it's not really a healthy situation and so fortunately you have the chariot energies coming in and swiftly moving about and saying you know what no we're going to change this nope your partner and you are going to have some a little bit of time away from one another while one heals and the other one heals but in a different way and others are you know moving a little bit towards success after going through such an experience and others are moving fast towards codependency in a relationship and you need to look out for those signs that you know that maybe you're in a codependent situation um, let's look at codependency Okay, so it says this card answers your question in perhaps a surprising way because addictions are the culprit behind the issues you're attempting to resolve. This could be your own craving for a substance or an unhealthful behavior, or it could be that your partner's addictions are impacting your love life. The card is also an indicator of, a ch of childhood experiences in an addictive family. Addictions numb the heart to pain, but they also diminish its capacity to love. Since love is the basis of your romantic partnership, addictions become a barrier to moving forward toward true excuse me, true emotional intimacy. This is especially true if you are twisting yourself in knots to please a person whose dependency has lessened his or her capacity for happiness. That no-win situation will negatively affect your self-esteem and your own happiness if you continue. Okay. All right, so it seems that you will get fast help with resolving these issues with your partner. Uh, for others, um, things kind of go fast in a different direction, maybe a different direction you're not really appreciating, you know, but nevertheless, you're moving fast towards a solution. Perhaps some of you have partners who end up getting incarcerated for a little while. Some of you um, have to break up with partners and you move fast to do so while others of you it's just a matter of getting some counseling and therapy and group you know scenario healing scenarios that helps the helps hasten the healing process for those who are single um, the codependency card is a reminder that it's important to work on these kinds of issues before you get married, before you're even in a relationship, to see how you measured up with, you know, relationships. Did you find yourself in codependent situations? If you did, you don't want to repeat the pattern. You want to heal that. So this month in April finds you really finding solutions on healing that wound. So that way, when a new partner comes, you won't, you guys won't fall into a cycle of trying to to heal and repeat that wound over and over again, trying to heal it. Heal it now before a partner comes in. May, we have two of swords and very soon. I love this, right? Very soon you'll be embarking on a new journey. It says clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. This is a good time for you to clearly decide on what kind of partner you want, what kind of relationship you're trying to have, do you want to be married? Do you not want to be married? All of these things are something to consider because very soon a partner is on the horizon for those who are single. For those who um, are in a relationship, very soon you're going to have to shift and change once again to 
you know, just for what's going on in your, you know, with your partner, with you, um, outside of the relationship, and how to reconcile that with inside of your relationship. So it's important to start to explore those things, maybe even with your partner, engage in that. Maybe some of you are um, dealing with some empty nest syndrome going on where family members are leaving. And not necessarily children, but any kind of family members. I don't look at empty nest as just um, when children move. It could be, you know, if you, it was just you and your partner living there. Now you have an empty nest when they leave. Or, you know, you and some roommates are no longer together. You have an empty nest again. So very soon you're going to be in a situation where you need to get clear on what is your path journey, where you're trying to go, what do you see for your partner, what do you, see, who do you see as your partner, what do you see for your family, especially those who are in, who already have children, what do you see for them, how do you see them interacting with their potential, you know, with your potential partner, all of these things needs to play out in your head beforehand, before the person comes. But the person that's in question for you, what you've been praying and hoping for, is on its way. They're on their way very soon. So you're invited by the two of wands to get busy <laughs> and get some stuff done. We have the two, or excuse me, the high priestess with the children card. And it says your love life is being affected by children. And the high priestess is really about following that inner guidance, intuition, and just um, listening to where it is that you need to go. Some of you are wanting to have children. Um, you've been hearing that call to have children. And so maybe you for a while thought you couldn't have children, but now you're, you're feeling hope again because your intuition is telling you, hey, maybe it's time to try once more. Um, you've been meditating on this, seeing how you feel about the idea of bringing children into your life. Um, some of you are guarding secrets surrounding children or surrounding your childhood. Um, and some of you are in a place where you have to put your children first above the relationship. And you have to listen to your intuition. You end up having to rely on your intuition to get to that point. So all of these different things could be affecting you all as, you know, in terms of children. I also say that for those who have no children, no actual children involved whatsoever, this again is about healing some deep-seated childhood wounds. And definitely it's a worthwhile cause because very soon you have a partner coming and the last thing you want to do is sabotage the relationship with a bunch of baggage that has stemmed from your childhood. I encourage you to seek, you know, counseling if you need to, talk to a trusted friend or family member. If you can't do that, then definitely, you know, talk to a therapist because it's important to heal these wounds so you can be able to move forward in a powerful way in your relationships going forward. All right, let's move into July. July, we have the Page of Swords and Let Go of Control Issues. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. Page of Swords sometimes goes barreling into situations. They, you know, are, like she's fervently writing. She's got ideas, you know, popping off. She's, you know, getting news of information of things that are coming up. And she's just wanting to prepare herself for that. So maybe you're getting news about a potential partner that you may be dating and you want to prepare yourself for that. You've got to let go of control issues, though. You can't anticipate everything about a partner. You really can't. You have to sometimes just go with the flow when you're dating someone, especially in the early stages. Don't try to pigeonhole and try to, you know, steer the the to the relationship in one way or or distort it in your mind just take it for face value of what it is and that's it you know and sometimes the page of swords they can't just leave it at that you know their mental 
uh, juices are flowing and they, they want to control the situation as best they can for the most favorable outcome for themselves. But in the end, no, that's just not going to not going to be able to fly. So allow the situation to unfold naturally, whatever that situation may be. It could be for those who are in the relationships, you need to let go and stop um, trying to control everything with your partner, everything with the kids, everything with um, trying to get everything done. You're going to run yourself ragged and you're going to alienate your partner in a way where they're like, what's the use of me even being around if I'm just going to have to deal with someone who has control issues? You don't want to be the one with control issues. You want to be the one who's flexible. And, you know, you don't have to, you know, just fire off different things and different ideas um, and then expect your partner just to fall in line and do them. There's a method to the madness. Now, you seem to gather more of understanding this with the August card of the Knight of Swords. With staying optimistic about your love life, you start to channel that energy into movement. Maybe you're actually, you know, going on dates, intellectual kind of dates, where you're kind of vibing and connecting with people on an intellectual level. And you're staying optimistic about your love life. Optimism is definitely a swords kind of um, energy because optimism, optimism deals with the ideals of feeling good about your life, feeling good about a situation, good feeling optimistic about a relationship. And so with the Knight of Swords, it gives a sense that you start to make some moves to help you feel optimistic about your love life. You make moves to go and, and date. Um, you're making moves if you're in a relationship to date your partner again and to really try to reconnect. And you are staying optimistic about your love life, which is really healthy. And then we have for, let's see, September, Ace of Swords. And give your relationship a chance. So this work on your partnership. So for those who, <clears throat> those who are in relationships need to work on your partnership and have new clarity of thought, new clarity of ideas of, you know, not getting caught up in, oh, I got something in my throat. I can barely take it. <clears throat> Ace of Swords, you know, it's about, um, new beginnings and new thoughts. It is the root of all new ideas about giving your relationship a chance. It's about, you know, knowing, allowing the inspiration to hit you in a way that you're motivated to give your relationship a chance. So sometime in September, you come to a realization that at like a new revelation to yourself that you're ready to give your love life a chance if you're not in a relationship just yet. For those who are in a relationship that maybe you were wavering on whether or not to stay or go, this card, these cards are saying, give your relationship another chance. It's worthwhile to see what happens. Your partner may rise up to the occasion and, you know, there you go. And then those who are single, again, just like I mentioned earlier, it's about giving your love life a chance. Sometimes when we're single, we think that we're putting out vibes that we want to be in relationships, but we really are closed off and not able to allow people in or not really sharing with others. But you, um, in September, I don't know if you're watching this video or you just come to your own and you realize in order for you to have any sustainable relationship, whether it's a love relationship or a friendship or a family relationship, you have to be willing to invest in the relationship enough to give it a chance. And if somebody crosses you or says something you feel is, 
is not in alignment with who you are, then it's okay to politely say something should you choose. This is a whole new way of thinking and being for you, Sagittarians. You're not used to this kind of advice. You're not used to hearing such things, but it will work. And then we have, no, no, October, Ten of Swords, something of roughly, you know, coming to an end. Passions may even be coming to an end, or maybe passions on fire, right? We have the Ten of Swords and then Passion. And it's just time to know when things are done, maybe in a relationship, when the passion has gone. You know, and sometimes the endings of relationships aren't a bad thing because on the other side is a new passionate love life that you've been missing out on. You know, the end of a particular relationship is happening and it's time to move on beyond this relationship. It's time to surrender that to the inevitable that passion has left this particular relationship and that you now wish to walk into a and of existence of full passion with your partner. And if you're not getting it, then by all means, it's time to end things um, gently with your current partner so you can make room for your partner. You know what I mean? All right. So then we have November. And we have the Judgment card, which is like the return card, they call it. And as it says, it's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. So perhaps someone is returning back to your life and you're wondering if it's safe to allow them back in. This card that says it's safe for you to love again is confirmation that it is. They are good people. So they won't hurt you. They will hold you with kid gloves even if they hurt you it wouldn't be major and it would be something down the line whomever this person is resurrecting in your life like the judgment card resurrects and it's safe for you to love meaning that for those who don't have any prospects or no one making a reappearance in your life um it's saying hey your rebirth is recognizing You've been kind of operating under a mode that it's not really safe to love. That maybe that if you put yourself out there, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get rejected. No one's going to want to be with you. And now through this rebirth in November, you have a change of heart. You realize it's safe for you to love and to for you. In fact, in November, we have the death card ending of, you know, of lonely times, perhaps a new beginning is happening or at hand. You know, sometimes yes, relationships can end tragically and and uh, and be an upset for you. But on the other side of that is peace, love, and harmony. And on the other side of that is healing family issues once and for all. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. So some of you finally have some healing with your parents, especially those who are single and those who are in a relationship. You finally have a healing in December um, 2019 and the error of your parents and you kind of bickering over everything because there was something that needed to be healed starts to cease. This ends. It dies. You guys are able to heal and move on. You're able to articulate what upsets you from them and they're able to do the same to you. And you all are able to move forward in a very positive and beautiful way. Then we have nourishment. Waxing Crescent 5, 7. Oh, I love that. It's so gorgeous. Let's read this to close out the reading. Number 7. Choose to nourish your mind, body, and spirit. Feed your values. When you are jealous or envious, it is a sign of what you are actually hungering for. Pay attention to your health. And then it says, I choose to nourish myself. Okay. 
Okay, it says, meeting our values and living by them is a sure way to nourish our being. We feel more complete and fulfilled if we are able to do that. Additionally, it probably is an exaggeration to say that the Western world is obsessed by food for the wrong reasons. Food is often used as pain relief, with many people overeating due to anxiety or pain. Food becomes a diversion rather than something that is a nourishing or even simply enjoyable. Learning to nourish bodies purely to give them what they really need is a key to mental and physical health. And so I think this is saying, you know, it's time to choose to nourish your mind, body, and spirit so that way you can be primed and ready for love, especially whether you're in a relationship or not. So you can be able to receive the bounty that is trying to be given to you. It's time for you to receive it. And I feel like in your love area, this is where the work, the most work needs to happen for you. The reason I say that is because in your um, general life reading, you had a get some rest card that came up. And now we see the get some rest card probably has something more to do with your love life. Getting some rest, pulling within, going within, allowing this resurrection and transformation to happen on its own, in its own divine timing, when it's going to happen. And you're able to do that. You're nourished. You are grateful for your nourishment. All right, my lovelies. Thank you so, so much for watching. It was such a pleasure doing this reading for you. I wish you nothing but beautiful love, big love even. And cheers to 2019. Bye.